Hey guys, welcome back to part 2 where I'm going to be designing the PCB for these lead matrix boards. And let's just jump straight in. So the first step will be to assign footprint values to every component in the schematic. This is a seamless processing keycap. And once it's done, you just need to export the netlist from the schematic editor. And then you import the netlist in the PCB editor. So here I've imported all the components from my schematic and just separated them all. And now I'm just going ahead and laying them out on the PCB in about the position I think they should be. And now I'm just routing these common anode pins. They all have to be connected together. I'd really like to be able to do it just on the one layer. And so I have to, uh, a neat feature in KiCad is you can change the individual pad sizes of a component without having to make a custom library part and a separate editor. You can do it all in the, the PCB layout. You can just modify the single pin. Right now I'm going ahead and placing all the resistors in what I'm considering to be a, about their final position. Along the top I'm going to squeeze them in between the pins on the top of the board and then in the bottom just between the common anode and the, uh, the red uh, cathode pins. And now once that's all done I can actually start routing some of these chips. Now of course this PCB routing is a pretty big um, job so it's a little hard to know where to start um, but I find if you just kind of do stuff do some of it um, and then you're bound to make some mistakes but it's better than just sitting and looking at it for, for you know hours so right now I'm just trying to route some of these pins the 3D viewer in KiCad is really useful to visualize what you've done and especially with the 3D models you can see if you got any component collisions or or uh, clearance issues. So now I'm just going ahead and adding in the control lines for each of the shift registers. So these are the common lines so they just run directly between the nine chips and so what I'm doing now is I've got this kind of arrangement of uh, vias here and I can route the traces through the vias and just continue them onto the next chip that works quite nicely and then there's a, a serial out pin from each chip goes to the serial in of the next chip so the data will flow through the chips um, Great feature of KiCad is the, the shove router mode, which they have now. Which means that if you get yourself in a bind and you know there's room, or even if you don't know there's room, you can kind of just like push a trace through and it'll try to work out what like what vias to move and what other traces to move in order to make that happen. Of course, it, it is still a little bit buggy. Um, routing this board I had KiCad crash twice so it's always a good reminder to to save off and once you've done something major just, just hit control s you know it's instant save so it's not a big deal KiCad's other routing mode is an avoid collisions mode which you can push a trace right up next to an adjoining trace um, and it'll keep the distance to the specified um, gap that you've set and that's really useful for getting nice tight traces. So you can see at the end here I've got the common anode MOSFETs that I have to drive and they take up quite a lot of space and I also need another shift register there. And so this last display is quite cramped in the routing. So all the traces are routed on the other layer. And now I'm doing all these MOSFETs will be mainly, I'll try to do on the top layer. As you can see, I keep going back to a 3D viewer to just uh, double check. And, you know, it's useful to be able to visualize the board uh, in a setting that's different 
from the the layout view here. So each of these MOSFETs has a pull-up resistor in order to ensure they're turned off when the chip is first powered up. And I thought it would be a good idea to pop in one of these like quad resistors or uh, octo resistors, but it turns out it'll just be easier for me to use single ones like this. And I've just packed them together really tightly up there. And because this is the last chip on the, the shift register chain, um, I'm not too concerned if it's a different orientation to the rest. Just the routing doesn't need to continue through. Now it turns out turning this chip actually cuts off a lot of space that I need to route these signals, so I have to switch them onto the front layer and then back to the back layer. This entire routing is done from the back layer view because the displays are mounted on the front and then the chips are all going to be sorted at the back. And I really wanted to be able to put all the chips on one side for a single sided load because that'll really streamline assembly of these things. And so I'm just trying to free up some space on the other layer here so I can route some more signals. And now I'm finally connecting all the all the common anode MOSFET drivers here. I probably could have used different MOSFETs. Each um, each column MOSFET only needs to be able to source about 200 milliamps if all the LEDs are on there's 64 LEDs that are driven, but they're only about 2 milliamps each. Um, for this board, because I've routed the output enable pin, I should be able to pulsive modulate that in order to achieve um, some brightness control, which was a limiting factor in the old board design. And so you can see I've finally added the ground pour and now that's pretty much all of the board routed. So I'm going to have one more part to this series, which will be putting these boards into a panel. So thanks for watching. I'll see you then.